Hello and welcome to the Race Show Podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Ray, and I am sitting here with my co-host, Mr. Jack Slayton. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. We've got a hell of an episode today. We have Mr. Zachary Ezrin from the Mighty Imperial Triumphant. Um, so super excited to get to this chat with, with them. Um, they have a new record, Alphaville, which is just like um, a fever dream of a record in the best possible way. Absolutely. Um, and, I, and I can't recommend their back catalog you know, any more highly. Um, but one thing we want to talk about with them, they just completed a uh, live stream event. Um, they opened for Behemoth on their uh, in, in Absentia Day uh, presentation they did. So it's really interesting to talk to him and see how that thing went when we're in such a uh, such a such a different time now. You know, um, but I know there's been a lot of uh, live music events talked about, streaming events here in town. You know, what are your thoughts on this? Well, it's definitely uh, it's a shift now. I think live music is going to be very different for a while, as it should be. You know, we all want everybody out there to be safe and and uh, take care of themselves. But I think some more uh, interesting things can come about this in a different way. Uh, we've got locally uh, a friend of ours, Count Zapula. Count Zap is uh, doing some live stream projects out of little kings and flicker bar here in athens georgia um allowing giving a venue for uh local bands to to show what they've been working on and also express their own musical tastes those are very exciting things and we'll keep you all updated on the uh, on that as it as we get more information absolutely um, and and you know this this is just one more way that you can help bands during this time you know, art is the soul of this this existence, and it's it's so necessary right now. Um, but uh, I, I know that Zapula had talked about doing a uh, thing at Little Kings where he was it was kind of going to be like a merch night, like a listening party, especially for bands that are putting out new material. You know, just anything to keep this local. You know, um, well, we got to keep the scene alive, and you know, there I. There will there will come a day where we'll all be there at a venue seeing a badass rock and roll show. And Absolutely. Having a good time. But and until then, we got to do what we can to just remember and keep it alive. Because, right. Because, as you've always said, art saves, and you know, we we really need this. Yes. I think a lot of people need to continue to be able to hear some form of live music and just listen to music. I know there's a lot of people out there right now that you know you might not really know what to do with yourself at times oh yeah um and uh you're kind of stuck at home or, or you're you're worried about everything that's going on in in, in, in the world and in, in, in our own country right now um listen to music listen to i i started listening to stuff recently that i hadn't listened to in uh 10 years yeah yeah getting back into some some stuff that really started my journey into the kind of music that i like right you know and what i mean you got nothing but time go for it right right well well that that's funny you mentioned that getting to our our guest tonight um uh zach from um imperial triumphant i cannot name a band that i've listened to more throughout this <clears throat> pandemic than them and it's been the perfect, you know, elixir for these times. It, it, you know, it's it's they're really pushing black metal further, and that's those are the bands I've always respected in that genre. The ones that that really want to take it further, and there is moments of just complete chaos, madness, and then there's moments of great beauty with this. Um, and I would recommend, like he does starting at the beginning of their <clears throat> catalog and going all the way through because it's such a journey and and it really solidifies that whole New York City theme in there and 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 um but enough of my yapping let's get to our talk with Mr. Zachary Ezrin from 
Imperial Triumphant. All right, we are fortunate enough to be talking to Mr. Zach Ezrin from the mighty Imperial Triumphant. Um, they have been promoting their excellent new album, Alphaville. Uh, how you doing today, Zach? I'm doing quite well, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much for doing this. Um, before we jump into the record, uh, you guys just completed a very unique live experience opening for Behemoth during their in, uh, in absentia day event. Uh, what are your thoughts on this experience and, and how did it go? Honestly, it was, uh, it was very intense and very stressful just because we had never done anything like this before and we were really unsure about how it was going to go because, you know, at the end of the day, we really wanted to deliver a top quality product and something that was maybe not even trying to replace a live, an actual live performance like that you would see in person, but just give another uh, perspective of seeing the band. Right. And I think we actually, it, it, I think it worked out really great because it pushed us really hard to think really creatively and, and think um, in ways that we've never thought before. And it, it, I'm really happy with the product and, we're very grateful for Behemoth to inviting us. Right, right. And, you know, you just said it there. I guess the parameters just push, push that creativity with everyone having to kind of raise their game now to even be noticed. How do you see – do you see other bands taking this route and, and, and expanding upon that, maybe even doing full tours? I mean, some tours? will and some won't, you know. Yeah. Um, it's just about, you know, who wants to put in the effort. Right, right. Um, well, let's jump right into Alphaville, um, and and you know I take some of the, some of the like especially on your earlier records, this the shit is just frightening for lack of a <laughs> better word, you know. And this leads in it's you can see such a progression through your music, um, and I know that it's been mentioned, you know, New York City, your 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 hometown is a huge influence on all of this music. Um, and I guess my question is, I feel that like you guys show the day-to-day, -day, there's grand gestures in some of the songs that really, when people typically artistically write about New York, tend to use, but you guys seem to have that feel of just the day-to-day -day madness. Um, but we live the day-to-day -day madness. Yes, yes. And how does that feed into that, uh, to, to your music? I mean, I just think it's, I don't know. The only way to describe it is it just comes natural to us, you know? Like, it would be really hard for someone to write about New York if they don't live here. And at the same time, you know, it just is something that, we know very well we've experienced very well and so we can write about it with a level of authenticity and i think that gives us a bit of an edge when it comes to our concept and our uh our whole uh development right right um and i'm you know talking about like you know a lot of bit a lot has been made about or written about the barbershop quartet on atomic age. But to me, that just so fits that. And especially the, the, the move into transmission to mercury. It's like you have all there's, there's moments of beauty to offset the just madness. That seems and that's to kind be. of how New York feels to us is like madness, you know, maybe 90% of your day. And then there's just brief moments of, of yeah beauty and 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 elegance and fine luxury and and those moments kind of you know we wanted to capture those those moments for sure yeah it definitely soars those highs it has that feeling um what do you see sorry i had a uh a technical issue there for a second no worries um now, now taking that with the live presentation, um, how did that evolve? Uh, again, very organically, just try, basically the the main 
goal behind the visuals and the stage production and everything that we do when you see us live is to represent the music visually. So everything that we've done, every step we've taken has been with that thought in mind. And we're still developing, you know, our ideas and building a uh, better production however we can with as, you know, as much creativity as we can. And it's definitely a really uh, exciting avenue to go down because for me, at least, it's not just a band where we make music, but it's a, an entire brand and a concept that I enjoy the creative aspects of when it comes to everything, yeah. whether it's the stage production, the merch design, the record covers, the poster covers, the, uh, you know, what are our guitars going to look like? Like everything about that is a, is a labor of love and a creative pleasure of mine. So it's something that I think about. Right. Right. And it, it just really brings the music across in a, in a majestic way. How hard well, the main concept is that it allows the viewer and the listener to absorb the music in another, with another sense that other than hearing, but they can see the music and they can, absorb it best this way and it kind of draws people in who might not be so uh uh what's the word like you, i guess used to this kind of music you know it's it's like an acquired taste if it's like you know you know what i mean like caviar fucking foie gras like this is something you need to get used to because it's a foreign foreign sound to you and it's not this isn't junk food metal. You know what I mean? Right, right. It doesn't go down easy, but it is definitely, um, I think, w from what everyone says, it's you know, it's worth the time and effort. Yeah, like like any music, it's it's you know, demands your attention and it demands you take the time. But it's so rewarding when you do take that time. Exactly. Uh, yeah, and I, I don't blame anyone who doesn't enjoy our music i'm not making music for everyone so it's understandable however i will say this like if you don't if you are listening to this podcast and you don't like imperial trumpet start at the earlier uh records in the catalog and work your way up towards vile luxury and alphaville which are definitely the most demanding records so i think you know you can sort of train your ears and get used to our sound before diving into the, you know absolute chaos <laughs> right right well well getting back to the record just just a little bit how much was the godard film an influence on the actual record it wasn't like a huge influence at first it was more just we have a song called alphaville and it's maybe vaguely inspired by the film and then the more we the more we uh you know, developing the album, the more we're piecing things together, the more it really starts to shine, really starts to seep into everything that we're doing, and it ends up taking the album title, and it starts to just become an overarching theme within the, the whole record. And it, it really is a great film, and I think it, it definitely um, played a huge role in just kind of the, the vibe that we put out there on Alphaville. Right, right. There's almost a film noir kind of vibe to the to the record to me. I mean, oh yeah, man, for sure. Um, but the, now, now on the live presentation for you, how difficult is that to get through a, a to just to survive a full set? I mean, it's just like anything; you just get used to it. Yeah, yeah, but just... not many people are trying to get used to standing on stage fully. You know. Um, covered in that kind of heat and stuff is it does that does the feeling of that play into everything i mean it's not as tough as you might think because it is it is our music and it's the adrenaline of being on stage and the energy of playing live it definitely takes over and you when you put the mask on you're you know you're no longer zachary ezra and you're just present your, you know, one third of the piece, the, the puzzle that makes up Imperial Triumphant and the, uh, the, they just, you, you're just like, okay, we have to make, we have to put on the show now. Like it just, it just happens. And, you know, of course it's difficult and you 
figure out ways to get better at it. It's just like, you know, any demanding activity, but I think at the end of the day, it's, it's worth it. And I, I couldn't imagine trying to present this music, at least I, I, personally, I wouldn't be able to do it in like t-shirt and jeans, you know? Yeah. Oh God. No. Um, now, now your personal musical journey, how did you get into this music? How did you, uh, what were your beginnings as far, what led you to black metal and, and avant-garde type music? Uh, I was just really into heavy metal and, and as a, you know, young, a youth and, you know, all the, even before that, just Hendrix and Zeppelin. And then, uh, yeah, a kid in, a kid in eighth grade told me about Bathory and I was like, okay, this is super dope. Uh, and then just kind of getting really into like second wave black metal bands. Cause I love the, I just love the evil atmosphere. You know, I was listening to death metal as well, but death metal was more about, it seemed brutality and technicality, which I appreciated, but at the same time, it wasn't like made with the intent of sounding just dark. And that's something that I really appreciated and loved. And then by the time I got to college, they started, I went to a music conservatory. So like they just pushed a lot of 20th century classical music into my head. And I started to love that because that's, I think, you know, the, the black metal of, of uh, classical music, if not even you know, beyond, it's so, so much darker and so much crazier than anything that, you know, comes from Norway oh, and yeah. in the nineties. So like that, honestly, this is, I'd say the, you know, the jazz shit and the black, jazz, uh, the black metal shit aside, 20th century classical music has had a tremendous uh, influence on my compositional style my guitar playing style and the imperial trumpet sound. Oh yeah, yeah. It's that's that's you can hear that all over it. Um, and is this something that uh, that you said you went to a musical? So how how intensive was that? You were just constantly. Uh, were you able to work on your side music on your own? Well, music? it was. Um... I went to uh, Cal Arts in California, which is, and I was a, I wasn't a guitar major though. I was a, a composition major, so it was, it was much more creatively uh, pushed than it was like go home and practice, you know, this, 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 and this. Like my guitar was just my tool for composition. It wasn't my focus of study. So it was all just creativity all the time. Just you know, write, write a string quartet, write right a winds quintet you know stuff like that and just getting familiar with orchestration and the you know, i don't know the role of every instrument i think that's something that plays a, a big part in imperial triumph is that the bass is in trying to play like the guitar and the guitar i don't tune my guitar down because i'm not trying to sound like a bass right. like I, I stay in my lane and do the guitar parts and then Everyone goes, oh, wow, you can hear the bass so clearly. It's like, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, one thing on the record, I mean, taking your musical background, you, you were fortunate enough to have Trey Spruance from uh, Mr. Bungle uh, produce the record. I mean, that just seems like a logical fit. What did he bring to these songs, and, and how was that working relationship? That was an unbelievable uh, fit. And, you know, we obviously had never worked with a producer before, so we were very, not nervous, but just more, like, curious as to how it would work out. And, but, you know, it'd be him being Trace Bruins, it was just like, obviously, I think he's going to do a good job. And he came in uh, perfectly. Just the energy between him and us and Colin Marston, our engineer, oh, yeah. everyone, like, just got along really well. He uh, 100% understands what kind of music we're trying to make what kind of vibe we're trying to give out so there was no what about this and then we would all go oh this is a terrible idea like every idea that he brought forth was perfect and only served to make the album better there's no egos in this band and there was no not in the studio so it was really just everyone working you know towards the greater good of making the best album we can 
Right, right. And having Colin there, too. God, that must have been amazing as well. So, Well, yeah, Colin's a genius. Um, well, where do you see, what do you, how do you see the future of this, of promoting this record? What, what are your future plans in order to get it out with the just insane time we're living in? We're going to just keep pushing uh, to create more content, however it may be, because, yeah, all, I think, you know, uh, we've made a big splash with Alphaville and we need to keep uh, spreading the word. And we're also, you know, until we can get back on the road, we're also looking at other, you know, industries and avenues such as like film scoring or video game scoring. You know, these are huge industries that, I think Imperial Triumphant would benefit a lot from, and vice versa. You know, we we do have this composition background. We all have done scoring, and I think who wouldn't want to, you know, watch a movie or play a video game that was scored by Imperial Triumphant? No, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it's something that's not just going to be like, oh, we threw a heavy metal band on there. It's something a lot darker and a lot more atmospheric. I think. Right. Right. Um... So we look forward to stuff like that. Well, uh, w- one thing too, I wanted to ask: How is New York City? Um, I know it's it's everyone's going through, you know, this thing together. But I remember at one point, you know, all of our eyes were upon you guys and thinking about you guys. How are well, where things? Where are you calling now? from? I'm calling from Athens, Georgia. Right. Well, um, it's much better than it was, you know, five months ago. It's um, things have opened up a lot. I don't know. I heard like something we're in the fourth phase of opening and I don't, I haven't heard anything about spiking, you know, coronavirus rates, but it seems, you know, most people are pretty uh, good at wearing the mask and washing their hands and, you know, just be, you know, following the guidelines and it seems to be working. You know, uh, you can go out to restaurants, you can, I don't know how it's going to work once it starts getting cold, but We'll see about that. And then, uh, yeah, it's just slowly working. My bass player, Steve, I think he played a gig like last week, like an outdoor gig, and it went well. So, like, things are getting brighter. I'm hoping really for the best, obviously. So we'll see. Well, that's that's really good to hear. Well, um, I want to thank you so much for doing this. But before we go, what would be the best place uh, – your uh, listeners, our listeners, could get in touch with you guys. What's the best hub for uh, in- Imperial Triumphant? Um, I would say, you know, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and definitely, you know, if you haven't already, pick up the vinyl at Century Media Store, Night Shift Merch if you're in America, uh, Evil Greed if you're in Europe. This is, um, you know, this is... The, the first real pressing of the vinyl is the most luxurious, of course. We print it on the most glossiest of uh, materials, and it's got so many bonus things like inserts and booklets and posters, and the repress will not have that. So if you're looking for the most luxury product, this is the one. Absolutely. Sure. Everybody get on that. Uh, thanks so much for talking to us, man. Oh, it's my pleasure, man. Thank you so much. Well, that's our show for tonight. I want to thank Zachary Ezrin for uh, taking the time to talk to us about this exciting band um, and their new record, Alphaville. Make sure you go and get that. Um, But until then, make sure you uh, follow us on uh, Instagram at Ratio Podcast. We're also also on Facebook. And um, we also have an email at ratio uh no ratio podcast at gmail.com sorry i'm i'm full of it right now but jack you got any uh parting words for the listeners out there oh just stay safe and uh keep listening and and we'll all come out of this uh ahead and uh yeah you yeah. Know, try and stay positive in a world that it's almost impossible to stay positive in. Right, right, right. Um and and uh I want to thank everybody for the awesome response to the Night Demon episode with uh Jarvis Leatherby. Um great chat. So if you haven't listened to that, make sure you go back and uh check out the uh back catalog. But until then, stay switched on and we'll talk to you soon. <laughs>